Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show. I'm your host, Katherine Basu. And my guest today is Ray Scholl, who lives in Burbank, California, and is the school head of the Burbank Donzon Dojo. Today's episode is actually part two of a conversation I had with Ray. We started our conversation off in yesterday's episode where Ray shared more about his personal fitness journey and how he was led to discover martial arts and more background on martial arts itself. So if you're like me and have not a lot of knowledge in martial arts, I think you'll definitely find that interesting and you'll get to hear more about why Ray is so passionate about martial arts personally. Definitely think it's worth a listen. So I'd recommend you go back and listen to that. Today though, I have Ray back to finish our conversation. And in this episode, we're talking more about how he developed the self-defense class for runners that he offers from time to time and will be offering again on Sunday, April 28th, 2019, up in Burbank, California. So if you're able to get to that class, highly recommend checking out the show notes for the link there. Definitely worth your time checking out. Before I share the rest of our conversation, here's a little bit more background on Ray for those of you who might have missed that and want to listen to today's part first. Ray currently holds the rank of San Dan, third degree, in Danzan Ru Judo and Jiu Jitsu, certified by the American Judo and Jiu Jitsu Federation, and has additional instruction in Kali, Sila, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He is also a Mod 2 graduate of the Danzan Ru Seifu Kujitsu Institute and a certified massage practitioner in the state of California. Ray is a former Marine, flew combat missions in Iraq, and was an FA-18D flight instructor. When not training and teaching martial arts, Ray is a training and development manager for an aerospace and electronics company in Burbank. He has a BA in psychology and a master's degree in organizational leadership. All right, here we go with part two of our conversation and learning more about how Ray designed and set up his self-defense class for runners. Fleet Feet, they, those stores, running stores, they sponsor running programs. Yeah, they're um, really good. Or their yeah. model. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fantastic. And then, um, so my wife runs out of one, and I've joined them on runs from time to time, but I, I tend to run alone and I, I don't run for the, the training that, mm-hmm. that these amazing people do. Um, but I do, you know, I'm too, I take my Marine background where you had to have situational awareness and, and think about what if, mm-hmm. what if bad things happen, especially doing what I did, you know, flying airplanes, it right. you had to have contingencies. And then you take that history and you take that background of being a flight instructor and then you combine it with being a martial arts instructor. And then you think about, okay, bad stuff still happens even in our lovely town. Right. Um, and when you look at the news, and if you Google attacks on runners, unfortunately, the, the stuff that makes national news, is, it's, all, it's all female um, violence to female runners. Right. Yeah. And, no, it's definitely scary when you look it up. Oh, it is. It is. Um, and so when I was looking at this, and I'm like, hey, I think there might be, there might be something to that. So to take it back to Kokula, it's like, hey, I have the skill set from various elements of my life that are converging together. How do I, how do I help people with that? Because, mm. um, you, know, you know, our dojo is to a, a, par- a Burbank Parks and Rec uh, department. And so we're not like, we don't have a shingle up. We're not a commercial place that you drive by and go, hey, that's a, that's a martial arts place. Mm. It's been a dojo for 30 years and, and sustained through the parks and rec department. Oh, wow. But people don't know about it. Yeah. So how do you, how do you get people, not less, I mean, it's great if they see what you do and you can recruit them and that's awesome. But, you know, people, you look at some of these runner schedules, they don't have time for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they're working out and they're running and that's what they do. But 
they still could, they could still benefit from some basic knowledge. Yeah. So I started running with some of these folks and asking them, Hey, is this something you're interested in? I talked to my wife. Um, I talked to Colin who runs Fleet Feet here in Burbank and I got a resounding yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I taught a women's self defense, an introduction to women's self defense a year ago. And that, you know, it was the first one I did on my own. And it went amazingly well. Um, the feedback I got was just, oh, wow, I have to do this again. So I started yeah. thinking, how could I do this for runners? And the interest is there. So I, I built a program around, I researched the types of attacks that people had endured sure. um, just through, you know, news. Um, time of day, what kind of weapons, you know, what was, what, understand the situation. Um, yeah. There's probably six of those I looked at. I wasn't going to go crazy with it. But based on that, yeah, I took yeah. a look at what, what we teach. And so jiu-jitsu, you know, ju it means yielding and non-resistance. And jitsu is techniques or system. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they, you look at things about how to pe- look at ways of how people are grabbing you. Um, how are they taking swings at you? And how do you respond to that? Mm-hmm. And the nice thing about jujitsu, because it's non-yielding, it's yielding, excuse me, non-resistance and yielding, it's a lot of people do it because they can't overpower the foe. Mm. And there's always going to be somebody that's bigger, meaner, faster, and stronger than you. Right. It's always going to be that way. Um, and if your game plan is I'm going to outbuckle them, that's not always going to work. Right. <laughs> um, and... You know, there's a lot to be said in warfare about the element of surprise mm. and, be, and being where they're not. And so you learn a system like this, and you can learn to do some of those things. And so what I did is I put together a system where runners would be, have to consider, what if, um, what if I get my hair pulled? Um, what if I get in a bear hug? Uh, what if I get pinned to the ground and they're on, straddling me on top? Uh, well, you know, I'm on my back face up. Mm-hmm. Ooh, even worse, what if I'm on my stomach face down and they're straddling my back? Mm. Um, you can just imagine where some of these scenarios are headed. Um, you know, really awful. Mm-hmm. Um, really awful stuff. And not unfounded. You know, I don't think subscribe to the culture of fear, but I do subscribe to the culture of being informed and prepared. Yeah. Hi friends, it's Catherine, and if you are joining us for an out and back walk and only have 15 minutes, that sound was your halfway point reminder. You will want to turn around now. All right, back to you, Ray. Yeah. Uh, and so that's the sort of stuff that I put together. And uh, I partnered with a, a gym next to Fleet Feet called Tough Cookie here in Burbank and said, hey, you know, let, what do you think? Could we use your space? Um, it's right next to Fleet Feet. It makes sense. It'll be high traffic. We won't charge anything. We can set up a donation system. And the response was just awesome. Yeah. Um, no, within, cool. within 72 hours, I think we had 36 people signed up. Wow. Yeah. Now, I have to be honest, that doesn't mean 36 people showed up. <laughs> but the interest was there. And, you know, doing this, doing it once, you're, you're not going to be an expert. I tell people in my spiel, you know, it's, you're not going to be a martial artist. You're not going to be an Avenger. You know, you're not going to be Captain uh, America or Black Widow out of this thing. But your pro- best thing you're going to have is an awareness. And you might have mm. one or two things that come back to your mind should this happen to you. Um, I, I, right, right. I really encourage people that part of their fitness program, they don't need to go get a black belt. But the stuff needs to be, the, the information, the skills need to be tempered like glass. Um, you, know, mm. you got to do it more than once. So I encourage people to take seminars like this to go get some basic um, self-defense training. But you know, one and done mm-hmm. isn't going to work. So I'm really trying to just go out there and take my knowledge, share it with people, so that they develop an awareness. Um, they already know the world cannot is not always a friendly place. They don't necessarily know right. how to avoid that, and when it does happen, how to make themselves a hard target. Um, Because when you think of it like from a predatory model, animals have to hunt Mm -hmm. to eat, except for us. You know, we don't really have to do that. But, you know, in the wild kingdom, (laughs) that happens. They're not going to expend energy on a, on a, on prey that is difficult to get or fights back. Because in the wild, there is no Mm -hmm. doctor, there is no first responder. If I get hurt, I might die. 
Um, right. When you look at threats like human on human, they're doing somewhat similar analysis where they're looking for easy targets, not hard targets. They're going to pick prey right. that they think isn't going to fight back. So you take that element of surprise as somebody who's informed and aware and has some basic skills, you might still get attacked, but how long that attack lasts and if they retreat, that, that difference can be made up by some basic knowledge. Mm-hmm. I can definitely see that. So you do some basic things for the three-hour class, but of course people won't have that knowledge and skill transfer 100% in that short time, just more of a taste of it and some quick tricks that they could do that they wouldn't know before coming to class. But what would you recommend then, Ray, for a runner who might want to make sure those skills become something that might actually be more second nature? What would the process be like to start doing some research and taking martial arts a little bit more seriously and including that in our fitness routine as a runner? Yeah, you know, it's, my, my perspective is a bit skewed sure. because I'm around martial artists all the time. <laughs> but in Burbank, you can't drive through my town. It's, I think there's more dojos and martial arts places here than 7-Eleven. Oh, geez. Um, yeah. It's incredible. I mean, it's not a market I'd want to break into here. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think my first, where I'm going with that is my first answer is find a place. Mm. Um, and, you know, a lot... From my experience, these these commercial operations will offer you for fee month to month um, training plans, mm. and there's a benefit to that in that you don't have to make a huge commitment. Um, and the drawback is it can be expensive. Right, right. Um, you know, it can be you know it can be pretty pricey to do that sort of thing. Um. But I think the availability, you know, the traditional martial arts system is, you know, you come see us, we'll determine if you're worthy of teaching, and then maybe we'll teach you. You know, that's kind of what you see in the movies. But mm-hmm. my experience has been, in, in this day and age, in this part of the country at least, it's, hey, come in, pay your dues, show up, and we'll teach you. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And if you leave, no problem. Just come back when you're ready to pay again. Mm. Um, so I think, you know, I hope that doesn't sound cynical, but I think that's an, there's an advantage there to people that want some basic training that's available. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say, you know, do your homework, find, make sure you understand what it is you're being sold. Um, because different people want different things. Right. Um, right. and make sure that whoever you choose, that there's some sort of, uh, and people may not know about this lineage. And when I say lineage, think like family tree, like who taught you? Mm. and who who taught that person and who taught the person that taught your person um and it sounds sounds kind of like really yeah you know you got to ask the question because there, there i haven't run into it myself but there's oh, people out there that claim to know things that, that don't or what they know is um uh, it's a corner co- it, it's not bad that you know different things but systems like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is a system. Mm-hmm. Um, Don Zan Ru, which is a system. Yeah, Kempo is a system. Um, Gung Fu and all the various things. They, these are all systems. But if somebody, you know, oh, I know martial arts, it's like, yeah, what's system? And, you know, tell me more about that. Tell me about the, you know, look to the lineage. Martial arts are pretty good about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll pick on BJJ because it's so prolific around here. Sure. You know, those, those, those instructors in Black Belt, they can tell you who, who they were awarded their black belt from mm. and how that goes back in my system. There's a lineage tree published online. Like if you wanted to check me out, um, I could tell you where to go to see who my teacher is, who taught him all the way back to the beginning. Wow. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really important because otherwise you could be a phony. Right. Right. Yep. <laughs> we had so, that. Yep. That, um. I hope that answers your question. And I guess the third option is, Find somebody like me that, you know, accredited that, that has a lineage that, you know, Hey, I can't go to the dojo, but you know, can we do seminars? Mm, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think that's a third option. Mm-hmm. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, it does. I just one step back, just because my martial arts knowledge is so limited. You're saying that in the past we would have a more stringent process to come into a dojo as a student, but we likely wouldn't run into that now. Yeah, you know, I was using that more as an old school model. Mm. To, if if people, you know, you watch, 
you know, you watch Kill Bill or something like that. If all sure. you know and you know is from the movies, you know, maybe you think, oh, it seems too off-putting and difficult. I don't know sure, if I should sure. do that. Sure, sure. It's not, my experience has not been that. Mm-hmm. Um, I will tell you there are some traditional systems that when you show up as a new person, you, you might get some of that treatment. Um, like, hey, you got to prove that you want to be here. So it does exist, but I don't know how prolific it is or how common it is anymore. Sure, uh, sure. That's, what, that's why you need to do your research. You know, see what they're marketing before you show up and, and get ready to go. Right. Now, Ray, you said that you personally spend about two hours in a given martial arts workout. What might a runner looking to take martial arts more seriously think about budgeting into their weekly fitness routine to get a benefit out of their classes? That's, that's a great question. Um, you know, and there are different models. Uh, some places I've been, they do hour long classes. Mm. Um, you know, in my format, um, it's, it's two hours and 15 minutes and the, like the first, the first 30, 40 minutes of that is what you'd regard as yoga and then, um, warm ups, mm. uh, like more calisthenics. And then it graduates into rolls and falls in the martial part. But um, to be more direct about it, you know, if you're only going once a week and you've never done it, um, it's going to be hard for your recall to remember from week to week. Mm. And it's going to take a long time to develop the muscle memory movement. Uh, when I think of running, you know, kind of to relate it to that, it's, you know, if you only run once a week, you're really not, you're really not going to build your endurance. Right. <laughs> um, you're probably going to do enough to get sore for the next few days, recover, go do it again and get sore again. Mm-hmm. Um, and you'll never really find like your, your, your cadence, mm-hmm. um, you know, what, what feels right on the feet. You're probably never going to get there, but I, the, the, the positive side of once a week is if you're really not sure if this is for you, that level of commitment is a good thing because it gets you in the door often enough to assess the culture, the style, um, and how that works for you uh, emotionally and kinesthetically. Sure. Um, you know, it, it makes sense to me that, you know, if that's what you got, that's what you got. I, I think to really progress two days, a, two days a week minimum, whether that's an hour or two, it, it really depends upon what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I don't think one's going to get you there, but I think it'll help you make a decision. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes, that's just, I think, helpful for people to start wrapping their head around in case they're, they're thinking about it. But yeah, I mean, I think for most things, right, once a week is pretty, pretty uh, hard to see much, but, but not, not, uh, uh, not so little, little of a benefit that you're not going to get anything out of it versus doing not trying at all, right? So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, an easy example is if you practice an instrument once a week, how good do you think you get? Right. <laughs> and that's, that's probably true. something more of us can relate to because I, I, you know, what, when in back, I, oh my God, I sound old. Back in my day, you know, <laughs> in school, you had to play an instrument and you had to learn to speak, you had to learn another language. And those are two good analogies for, well, if you only do it once a week, you're probably not going to pick it up. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. That's true. But you'll figure out if you like the trumpet or not. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's true. Very cool. Well, this has been fun just learning, you know, learning more. I appreciate you sharing your, your journey and just more about martial arts because I have a lot to learn, that's for sure. <laughs> but I like the idea because I'm about like five foot two on a good day, maybe closer to five foot one. And so, and I'm a runner. I'm not, I'm a, I'm an easy target, I would think. So it's nice to know that I don't have to be able to muscle myself out of a bad situation if I can start to learn some skills. So definitely appreciate that. So you said that you're going to be doing another one of the self-defense classes, little seminars for runners in April, at least. Like, do you want to share a little bit more about that and how people can learn more about that? And I can share links in the show notes as well, but. Yeah, it's on April 20, April 28th is a Sunday from 11 to 2 in Burbank at uh, mm-hmm. Tough Cookie Fitness on Magnolia Boulevard. We'll be doing another uh, self-defense for runners class. And it'll be uh, very similar to the content that we, that we did in February. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, things we'll cover there is um, a little bit about the do's. You know, I don't like talking about don't, but mm-hmm. a little bit more about, you know, what things a runner should do and to be aware. Um, we'll talk about the options of, of fighting or, or, or flighting, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, 
we'll, we'll talk about key targets on the body. Um, we'll talk about, you know, hand grabs, wrist pulls, bear hugs, hair pull, uh, chokes, and then uh, what happens when you're on the ground. You know, what, what are some of the options you have there? Mm-hmm. Um, and that usually fills up your whole three hours. I bet. Yeah. This got, it's when you're teaching someone something, right? Like there's a lot of little ins and outs and you're trying to maximize the time. Like we talked about, probably want to continue uh, your training beyond that. So try to get as much in as you can. I could see how that would be probably, probably really flies by. Yeah, it does. Well, very cool. We'll definitely have to get the link for that so people can check it out. And um, yeah, Ray, well, I appreciate you being here. Anything else you want to share before we officially say goodbye? Oh, as far as that event goes, you know, it's, it's on Eventbrite. So if you, if you were to look at Eventbrite or Google Eventbrite self-defense for runners Burbank, um, you'd probably find it. But I'll make oh, sure cool. I send you the link. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thanks for taking the time to hang out today. Yeah, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about something I love to do and, you know, for being able to talk about how to share knowledge and mm. help people feel better and safer. Yeah, no, I, I love that. I love maybe some people listening will will consider trying to share some of their knowledge with with someone else, right? Whether it's fitness related or not. So, absolutely. Thanks for listening to the Fit Fifteen. For show notes and more, visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast. See you next time. Hi, friends. It's Catherine, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of the show. Wanted to remind you that this episode was part two of my conversation with Ray. So if you missed part one, head back and check that out. I think you'll enjoy learning more about martial arts and about Ray's fitness journey and how he found martial arts and why he's so passionate about it. I feel like that might inspire you to be more interested in trying it out for yourself. So definitely check that out. If you are going to be in town on Sunday, April 28th, 2019, which is when Ray is hosting that next Self-Defense for Runners class. Don't miss out on that. It will be held in Burbank, California. All the links to that are in the show notes. I'm sad I'm not going to be able to make that, but I am going to be in London for the London Marathon. That's my excuse. So if you're going to be in London for marathon weekend as well. I would love to connect with you while I'm there, maybe cheer you on if you're going to be running or spectate the race with you if you will be spectating. We do have a pop-up fun run we're hosting to help raise some funds for Get Kids Going, which is the charity that my client Meredith is running for. So to learn more about that and how you can participate, even if you're not in London, we'll still have a little bit of a loophole there so you can get your race medal, your sparkly finisher's medal for doing a donation, head over to fitarmadillo.com slash London run. That's fitarmadillo.com slash London run. And since I am going to miss out on this upcoming self-defense class, I'm working hard to get ready to host another one, possibly for those of us in the South Bay. So if you are local to the South Bay of California, Hermosa Beach, Manhattan Beach, Redondo Beach, and would be interested in taking a course, shoot me an email about that, podcast at fitarmadillo.com, and I'll try to get Ray out there at the best day and time for those of you who have responded. So thanks so much for listening. If you subscribe, I will chat with you tomorrow. Bye.